Hi friends. First thing I wanna say is thank you so much for all the prayers and the support. My God, it brings just tears to my eyes. Um, okay, let's get with the updates. Holy guacamole. You know what I love though is everyone sharing their stuff. Like, I don't know if you guys know how helpful you have been to not just me, but everybody. And my favorite thing is when a couple people will start a conversation and I'm not even a part of it. Like, it'll just be a stream of people saying, oh, yeah, I had to do that. And, oh, yeah, watch out for this. And, oh, yeah. And so it's, I just feel like it's so great that this, like, community of people that are praying and sharing and being so helpful. You guys, it's the best thing in the world. Okay, so the updates. I don't even know where I'm at anymore. Good Lord, I'm going to see like four or five doctors. Let's get some things out of the way. Um, they wrangled up the cortisol. Don't have Cushing's. Apparently, it's stress-related, my high levels of cortisol. <laughs> Why would I be stressed? I don't know. <laughs> so the doctor said, settle down. Wants, wants to put me on Wellbutrin, but I keep telling them I'm not depressed. I'm not bummed about anything. I'm just a little overwhelmed. So the cortisol, out. Um, I just need to settle down. Then um, the bone marrow biopsy, negative. So we don't have to worry about that right now. They kind of put the leukemia on the side burner, the back burner, because we're dealing with the breast. So to the breast we go. Um, oh, wait, I think my husband's coming in. I think he comes in when he hears the word breast. <laughs> Never mind, bad joke. Okay, so let's go to the breast. Um, I had the breast, the, the lumpectomy done, the breast surgery done, and they took some lymph nodes out to check them. Weird thing that they put in this marker like two days before. Listen to this. They put you in the mammogram machine and they squish your boob. And then they stick a needle in your squished boob because it being squished apparently isn't bad enough. So they stick a needle in it and then they put in this little screw radiation thing or something. I don't know. But they don't just squish it like and, and then unsquish it. Oh no. We kept that squished boob for about 10 minutes. <laughs> that hurt. Then the day of surgery for the boob, they put in this radioactive stuff and they put it in with a needle and that burned. But what was funny, well, it's funny to me, that like two to, for two to three days after the surgery, it looked, every time I went to the bathroom, didn't matter what kind of business I was doing, it looked like I ate a Smurf. Ah, bright blue. Everything bright blue. So whether it was number one or number two, it was bright blue. I should write for Dr. Seuss because that rhyming is just genius. Whether it was number one or number two, it was bright blue. <laughs> Seuss, call me. Um, anyway, so we did that. Then we had to wait for, the surgery went good. Uh, it was good until um, the pain meds wore off. <laughs> That's why I wrote you and I was like, ouch, ouch, ouch. Since started to hurt, but not so much in the breast area, but up in the lymph node, like up where they did that incision. So that, that hurt, it still hurts, it's weird. Um, is that normal? Does your armpit hurt too? Okay, so then I got news the other day and I didn't want to wait for it to do a video to tell you. I just put it up there real quick. Lymph nodes, negative for the cancer. So tomorrow I go to, uh, for the radiation, you have to actually wait four to six weeks for your stuff to heal before they'll start radiation. But tomorrow I'm going as a preliminary to get ready for that. So I think they're going to do a thing called 
mapping. Um, talked to one of my friends and she said, they're get, I'm gonna get tattoos. I can't wait to explain that to my mother. Anyway, so, but then the weird thing is, is my oncologist called and she said that they have to send my, um, the breast, what they took out of the breast for testing. And the testing takes um, like a week to 10 days. Oh, my hair is miserable. Week to 10 days. And they have to test it to see if I need chemo or not. So that I don't like too much because I don't understand. If you took out the lymph and the lymph was clear and then you took out the cancer that was in the breast and I'm gonna do radiation and, and pills and all that, why is there a question of chemo? But then from what I understand is if, it's, if it is determined to have been a um, aggressive cancer, then you have to do chemo then radiation. So that's still up in the air. Am I doing just radiation or am I doing chemo and radiation? I don't want to do the chemo. Any words on that? Ooh. Okay, so anyway, whatever will be, will be. Now, now that we're getting that around the corner, now we're going to go back to the leukemia. So because the specimen was messed up at the other place, we pretty much just have to do what they're calling a watch and wait. So I have to wait for another pop out. And I have to have blood tests done every three months. Whoopie do, I'll do that. And then I just have to make sure that I don't get, you know, if I start to have symptoms like getting really tired and not tired, I mean, remember how I was before? I mean, weak, weak and in bed for 20 hours a day with like the drool coming down onto my pillow. That was my functioning. So I have to watch for that. We have to wait for another pop out. She's almost hoping I have one so that they can collect the specimen properly and figure out if I'm a T lymph or B lymph or whatever. Blood tests every three months. Okay, now the boat. I have so much to do, you guys. And you know what? I know you guys are like, oh, I had to run. You can't do all this, the radiation, the chemo, all that, and live in a boat. I'm going to give it a whirl. I got to give it a whirl. Because if you want to rent, I looked into it. If you want to rent an apartment on the application, they want to know where you work. And they want, um, um, your last couple paychecks. <laughs> so I don't think that, um, if I just walk in there and smile and say, hi, I don't have a paycheck or a job. Can I rent your apartment? That they're going to let me do that. So they're not. So I'm working up other things. Don't worry. It's all going to be okay. Knock on wood. Okay. So what else did I want to tell you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so one of you got, you guys were all talking about a GoFundMe and I was so touched when Jane Hansen started one. So you guys don't worry about it. One of the Facebookers already started one and it is the kindest, sweetest thing, thoughtful that I've ever, ever been witness to. It just brings tears to my eyes, but you know what kills me the most and gets me the most is all the prayers priceless effective uplifting touching i have never seen anything like you guys in my life ever i mean i knew we were friends and stuff but to constantly i think the phone's shaking because i'm shaking i gotta hold with two hands constantly be checking on me and sending out the prayers, my phone's shaking, um, the positive words, the advice, all the things I've been holding on to have been extraordinary. It's not even 
a word that touches what it is. And you know what? I've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking about um, like what happened with COVID and what happened with all of this. And I figured out what's important in life and what's not important. Money, how big your house is, the car you drive, the job you have, your bank account. They don't mean squat. What is so important is the people around you that love you, your friends, your family. One of you guys wrote, why doesn't she cry? Why doesn't she just cry and let it out? And then someone else answered like this, and I don't, I hope I don't misquote you, but it, it struck me because I'm like, yeah, that's right. She said, being happy has to do with what's happening around you, your surroundings. So do you have a job? No. Do you have money? No. Do you have a car? No. Do you have a house? No. Are you sick? Are you ill? Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to be happy, but joy is something inside your heart and no one and nothing can squash it. Not someone firing you from your job, not losing a house, not having cancers, but it has all that. It's just joy that you have in your heart. Where does it come from? Faith, family, love, hope, these things that are intangible, which you can't buy. And that's what I have. So, yeah, my happenings suck. <laughs> but I have joy, great joy in my heart. And you guys are part of that joy. And you guys are part of who put that in me. So I have a very joyful heart. So I don't cry unless it's tears of joy. When I thank you for being good, kind people. I'll give you more updates. Ah, I love you, fuckers. Bye.